I'm uh, Staff Sergeant Christian Cornelius. I'm with 5th Battalion, 11th Marines. Uh, what current billet do you hold? Uh, I'm the Assistant Battalion Ops Chief. I work in the uh, S3. Okay, Staff Sergeant, could I just have a spelling of that first and last name, please? Sure, it's uh, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N. Cornelius, C-O-R-N-E-L-I-U-S. All right, Staff Sergeant, and uh, just a hometown for marketing purposes. I'm uh, from Nashville, Tennessee. Awesome. So, uh, first question, really, uh, what did uh, Tango Battery really do out here today? Um, today we had the uh, final platoon of uh, Tango going through something called the Mobile Immersion Trainer, which is uh, essentially a bunch of contractors um, come out and uh, support uh, training evolutions of, of different sort, however we want to we do it. Um, the uh, Mobile Immersion Trainer, the way we did it, um, <clears throat> it's kind of a combination of a couple of events put together. Um, they start off in a fire base, patrol base kind of uh, scenario, and um, we have some interactions with the locals, key leader engagements, um, uh, some attacks by uh, insurgents um, from the local populace, along with some more probing, um, suspicious activity. And uh, then the whole thing culminates with a convoy um, with the purpose of resupplying another patrol base about five miles away um, in which they uh, interact with some more local nationals and also uh, get attacked a few times. Awesome. Uh, so why is the battery uh, doing this training opposed to just uh, firing their HIMARS or other training staff aren't? Um, well, th this particular battery is slated to deploy here uh, in January, and um, High Mars has become a very valued uh, asset in Afghanistan, um, especially in a counterinsurgency kind of environment that we're currently operating in. Um, we are uh, precision guided munition. Um, we have a very fast response time, and um, we have an uh, on target, on time, accurate record um, that people very much appreciate. Um, the reason it's important for for these in particular, this particular battery is um, we have a tendency to bit, be a bit removed um, from the big bases because uh, seeing as how we're shooting large projectiles into the air, it's good to be removed, slightly removed from uh, air assets. <clears throat> make sure that everything's deconflicted and uh, we have a tendency to get put in smaller uh, bases uh, put off from everything else and uh, we uh, we we find ourselves in, in remote locations and also um, we are responsible for our own internal security because we are a high value target um, so we have to know how to protect ourselves even within the larger bases as well. Awesome. Uh, so one thing I'd say is notable of today's training steps are is the actual role players they're speaking uh, Pashto uh, and they really resembled uh, Afghan people. Uh, what, what do you think was, uh, how do you think uh, that was good for the Marines today. You know, uh, the contractors that we had with us today were, were really exceptional. Um, they stayed in character uh, really, really well. Uh, they spoke uh, only Dari or Pashtu. I, I'm not sure which one because I don't speak either of them. Um, but they uh, they stayed in character and the the parts that they played um, were, were exceptional. We had a lot of really good contractors out with us today. Um, the um, the role players themselves uh, were extremely adaptable. The same individual that was playing uh, a local elder um, negotiating uh, space with a local commander was also the same guy that later on was uh, pulling trigger on an AK-47 shooting blanks, had uh, Marines on a convoy. Um, the uh, the role players themselves can really make or break a training evolution because, you know, with uh, anything when you're when you're out there and you're running around if you know the guy on the other end is actually a marine he's going to react in a certain manner but it becomes much more awkward when you actually have a 65 year old afghan man that you have to negotiate with in his own language through an interpreter um, it really makes uh, it really makes the scenario a lot more so uh, are you guys trying to get as realistic training as possible before this battery deploys staff aren't? Um, that was definitely the idea. Uh, the whole point was to get them out here and get them to interact with locals, um, see what kind of cultural uh, lessons they'd taken away from, from their training, and uh, see how the Afghans uh, themselves interpreted uh, their uh, cultural training when, when applied in real life or as as in real life as we can possibly make it and that was the whole point of, of the scenario today there's several different um, stages in which uh, depending on how the 
uh, Marines behaved, uh, it adjusted how the role players would in then turn uh, react. There's actually a scenario uh, during the convoy when a Marine vehicle breaks down and local nationals come up from the rear and uh, they have medicine for a sick mother in a nearby town and they have to get up the road. The Marines are blocking the road um, and the only way they can get by is if one, the Marines are respectful of the fact that the uh, local nationals have you know, a problem that they have to attend to and two, uh, do they have somebody inside their convoy, specifically an interpreter, that can uh, let them know even what's going on. So it, it you know, depending on how they reacted um, really changes the scenario to fit uh, their actions. Awesome. Uh, so. What do you think the role players did for the Marine Staff Sergeant? Like, did they, uh, <coughs> did the Marines have a heightened level of security stress put on them uh, through the interactions? The uh, the role players added a, a, a what I would just call a level of uncomfortableness um, to the whole scenario because it's you really don't know the man on the other end. Um, you don't know what he's like, and you, you're not even sure if you speak English at him, he's actually going to understand you. Um, I think that it, it added this, this whole element uh, that's really important um, for Marines to experience prior to actually engaging with, with real Afghans in, in country. Fantastic. Um, so uh, during the afternoon, the Marines went on a convoy. Um, so what was the Marines' mission then? What was their training on that part, Staff Sergeant? Um, their mission was just to uh, take some supplies uh, from one patrol base to another. That was it. That was the, their, their primary objective. And then uh, upon reaching that objective, they dropped off supplies they, they had and then they, uh, they returned to their uh, fire base or their patrol base. And, uh, you know, just showing them one of the worst case scenarios when they're coming on their way back. Um, they hit uh, improvised explosive device, you know, come under fire. Uh, <laughs> Can you talk about that a little, Staff Sergeant? Absolutely. Um, we had a couple of uh, simulated IEDs uh, out here, and uh, basically what happened was the uh, platoon um, came upon uh, an area, and they had uh, some suspicions about the area itself. They stopped some vehicles. Uh, they searched around. Um, unfortunately, the people pulling the trigger on those IEDs and the, uh, the people who put those IEDs in were in fact Marines so we did a really good job of hiding them and uh, they, they looked around for them because it was a good spot and then uh, we actually managed to set those IEDs off um, on one of their vehicles. Um, <clears throat> after that happened uh, we had a couple of uh, casualties that had been uh, done up by a moulage artist and those uh, casualties ran out and laid down and uh, one of them had uh, severe burns all over his face and arm and another had a, his leg, caught a piece of shrapnel on his leg and um, then uh, after that, as the Marines started taking care of those casualties, uh, some small arms far fire started on the, uh, on the convoy, and the Marines responded with uh, some crew serve weapons, uh, some other small arms fire, and they ended up aggressing on the enemy and, uh, and taking them out just the way Marines are supposed to do. Awesome. So how do you think uh, your Marines performed uh, you know, with one of the worst case scenarios coming back on that convoy steps arm? I think, uh, you know, given, given the scenario and everything, I think they, they performed very well. Um, they, they went out of their way to take care of all their casualties. Um, they treated the locals with respect and uh, when the enemy uh, attacked them, they aggressed on them and they killed them. Awesome. So, uh, last question, Staff Sergeant. What do you think is the biggest thing out of entire today's training with you know, uh, fantastic, you know, simulated casualties, role players. What do you think this is the biggest thing the Marines took away from this? I think the biggest thing the Marines took away is that, uh, one, you can't plan for every scenario and that being able to adapt to everything is, is the most important thing in, in any situation. Um, and that whenever something bad happens, as you learn your weaknesses, you need to adapt to them and you need to uh, grow from them. So learning is uh, something that's always occurring no matter how proficient you think you are going into any scenario.